The University of Detroit Mercy presents another brand new episode of Ask the Professor, the radio show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. Today's program was recorded using Zoom video conferencing technology. The University Tower chimes ring in another session of Ask the Professor, the show on which you match wits with the University of Detroit Mercy professors in an unrehearsed session of questions and answers. I'm your host, Matt Mayo, and let me introduce to you our panel for today. If you were with us on Zoom, you wouldn't be able to see him, but you could feel him in your heart. It's Professor Jeff Boats. I'm being a sneaky ninja again. <laughs> Child's going to have to come up with a new James Bond image to put over. Uh, I'll, I'll find somebody for you, Jeff. Don't sweat right. it. I'll, I'll plug somebody in there. I don't think you've done Timothy Dalton yet. I was just thinking this morning he was my no, favorite. Oh, come on. Are you kidding? Really? He's yeah. your favorite Bond? Well, actually, not, not, not Craig. Oh. Well, actually, after Daniel Craig, he's the best. But before, before Daniel Craig, he was. Ah, got it. Okay. Well, I think he was the truest to the books, you know, if you but, read the books. Oh, okay. Yeah. Did, didn't, didn't I insert a George Lazenby once in there for you once? If I remember yeah, vaguely. Yeah. Okay. I'm very unconventional. I think I like my James Bonds exactly backwards from everybody else. Fine. I'll put David Niven in. The new one is supposed <laughs> no. to be uh, Henry Cavill. Mm. Oh, supposed to be the new that. Bond. That's really? Cute. He's going to be in uh, the new Lo Loki 2. Oh, really? Well, okay. He's super cute as long so as it doesn't interfere with him taping the witcher i'm right <laughs> <laughs> a man who knows what he likes when it comes to streaming and i'm guessing that your plate is really full at this time of year right now it's professor dan maggio uh yeah it's well no should it be <laughs> well so leslie and i literally am i, got so am I missing something behind on um better call saul and yeah. then the, the show just finished. So we felt like we had to finish it. And she goes, can we watch faster? We're missing She-Hulk. We're missing Rings of Power. We're missing Wednesday Adams. Like, there's a lot of crap out there. Yeah, right? I've, I've, seen, I've seen a little bit of She-Hulk. Drew's been watching it, which is hardly a surprise given his comic <laughs> book obsession. But yeah, it actually seemed not bad. It's but very, very, very true about, to the comic. Um, yeah, what did you think about, I'm assuming you're watching Game of Thrones prequel, uh, Dan? Um, not excited, but I'm oh, willing okay. to give it a shot until the end of this season. Um, I don't appreciate some of the suggested marriages that have come up already. Um, made me almost want to say, I want my money back. Oh, I don't know man. if you all know what I'm talking about. I do. Um, I do. So, um, but I'm waiting for the, I'm waiting for it to develop. The young, is it Rhaenyria? She's pretty fantastic. But Ooh, that's you all. mean the marriage between the king and the child that was yeah. suggested? Yeah, it was kind of that weird. Kind of <laughs> well, he passed up the 12 year old for the 15 year old, didn't he? Right, yeah. yeah. I mean, so anyway, <laughs> uh, we'll see. See what happens after a okay. season. Okay. I'll stick for right now. I got one season to go of my gritty um, Southwestern America crime and legal drama. Um, Professor Dave Chow um, is popping Tylenol and here to say hi. Yeah. Oh. Pleasure to be here, as always. So, yeah, it is it is what it is. Hopefully by next week, I'll have all the drywall in our house. And then um, we've got a window to replace internally. So right. lots of plastering. So, okay, that's cool. It'll be, it'll be interesting. So the project is coming along. I mean, winter's around the corner. So I know. I, I, somebody's got to keep the construction crews going on our street, right, Matt? <laughs> hey, I did see your Absolutely. wife mowing the lawn last week, though. So that's. It's a long story. Maybe, I know. Maybe not on the air. <laughs> no, no. We, uh, oh, I can't cool. wait to talk. Where were your three strapping sons? Leslie has yeah. only mowed the lawn in the 25 years that we've been married. She's mowed it once. <clears throat> Last weekend was one of those times. And it took a long time. I'll have uh -huh. to fill you all in later. Fill you all in later. It's a 12 it's a mini series over there at the Maya household. So, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a saga. Um, <laughs> um, Professor Beth Oljar is here with us. How did your first week go, Beth? Uh, it was it was not too bad. Uh, I'm glad it's done, of course, <laughs> as I'm sure we all are. But um, yeah. yeah, it was it was uh, it's all right. I had some kids who were kind of confused by the concept of the seating chart. Oh, oh, okay. Like oh. I have to stay in the same seat that you I had was a seating chart. 
I'm really terrible with names and so it's only gotten worse over mm-hmm. the years. So, and since they, I raised their grades for participation, I need to know who to, you know, give the credit yeah. to. So yeah. yeah, I make, I just tell them, sorry, if this seems too high school or elementary school, but I got to do it. If I'm going to learn your names, I make a it's, seating chart. It's important. I mean, the fact that you show them that you take effort to get to know them is a, a matter that is very positive no matter how you do it so i figure as much tuition as they're paying they are entitled to have so, their professors their names so beth how many students do you have in the classroom 30 35 in a section Ooh. of pro so i have okay. two okay. intros and yeah. in ethics yep, which is 22 yeah. okay one of my colleagues actually used to make little name plates for all of them Hmm. And have them sit in front, you know, sit in a circle and do it that way. But that could be a little troublesome with 30-some, 30, 30 that's all. So. Well, and they're masked, too. So there's right. a difference. Right. Although oh. we did just get that flip uh, a few minutes ago before we started uh, taping this episode. The Wayne County's gone down to medium. Oh, so have we? So at this point, it's recommended. It's week, yes. But so. not required. Yes. Probably Unless it changes be. before Monday morning. That's we, what counts. Tuesday, Tuesday. We also got oh, a Tuesday, yep. about a voluntary power cut to campus for a half hour tomorrow. So enjoy whatever is needs to be fixed when you get back on Tuesday. And I have a bag of the simple masks that I carry in case students don't have one. I do too. I've already given out yep. a bunch of them. Good idea. Good idea. Uh, Professor Jim Tubbs is here back in the saddle, uh, so to speak, teaching. Hello, that hello. Good to see you again, Jim. Good to be here. Yeah. So are both of your um, ethics courses, are they the uh, the one-shot dealios where they're going to be two and a half hours, one night a week? Yeah, except they're hybrid. So we're doing oh. part of it online and part of it part of it in class. That's kind of cool. Oh, that's good. That's it, it, good. Well, I learned that during, the, um, during when I had to teach everything online during COVID. What I discovered was that the, the lectures are recorded and they listened to or watched at home they asked more probing questions about than what they heard in class. Nice. So I decided I would use that even when I'm meeting with them in class. I'd oh. have them listen to that first, and then we could talk about it when we got together. And so far, it's working well. That's great. That's what great. Describing is called flipping the classroom. And uh, we got a couple of math professors who like to do that now. Yeah. Chemistry, uh, Mara does that too, I think, for yep. her chem courses. Absolutely yeah. true. Yep. And again, folks uh, listening in, we are uh, favored by our guest panelists, hoping to become a uh, fixture on the program, Professor Aaron Bell from Detroit Mercy's basically brand new Center for Excellence in Teaching and Learning. And uh, you also teach in the Department of English. I do, and I'm hearing a lot of best teaching practices. Uh, I am the person that does the nameplate and I even add a level of alliteration. Uh, so like da- cool. Dave, you could be, you could be like, you know, um, delightful Dave. And then I would, you know, connect that or um, chipper chow. Uh, that would Something. be a way. <laughs> or, or I should be thrown into a chipper. I mean, uh, that too. I mean. <laughs> that, um, all those uh, special devices, but I, I'm hearing a lot of great best teaching practices. So that's pretty awesome to You are making Mary Matt the uh, molybdenum mixer very blushy right now. <laughs> Awesome. Well, yeah, I, I always suggested having a PayPal account so they could pay the bribes faster and quicker. That's all. So yeah, yeah, that's always that good. always works. That's Venmo. Good. Ben, I was going to say Venmo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Bitcoin. Well, <laughs> oh. Hey, uh, uh, panel and listeners, this is a program where you can send us questions regarding anything. If you stump the panel, you win a prize. If you don't stump the panel, you win a prize. You can send us the questions in a number of ways. Email us at atp at udmercy.edu. Find us on Facebook and Instagram or listen on your favorite smart speaker by asking it to play Ask the Professor at University of Detroit Mercy. Okay, here we go. Dear panel, it's a new semester. That it is. And time for new questions. I hope all the professors had a safe and refreshing summer. Below is my submission of 20 questions all over the map as it seems as though the professors seem to thrive on that kind of variety. I've taken to not asking for a passing grade anymore as I know the professors will find their way in answering the most difficult and obscure questions that we listeners send in. I hope they'll enjoy the questions. It's our old friend, Amber Hubley. Thanks for sending these in, Amber. We really appreciate it. You always send great ones, yeah. Okay. What was the first TV show that had a definitive season finale? 
Ooh. Definitive. The, the star of the show wanted to quit. And so the producers wrote a planned script to accommodate that. The Cheers. Virginian. But like Webster? No, it couldn't have been. Webster, sir. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm just thinking like, oh, can, you give us a, can you give us a decade Funky hint? Funky Brewster. So it Ragnet. Be, That's back now. <laughs> I would say pre-Webster. How's that help? <laughs> oh, great. Uh, Mary <laughs> Tyler Moore. I would say, broadly speaking, golden era of television. If oh, you take my I Love Lucy? Mm -mm, mm -mm. A little, little bit of you want Golden era is not helping me in terms of a decade. I'm sorry. Uh, 50s. Okay. Do you uh, mean the, oh, in the 50s? Do you mean the 50s? Gosh. Donna Reed. My this three kills seven. me because you know, I know that I'm getting this wrong and you're all going to yell at me and say, Matt, well, that was the 80s. It wasn't the <laughs> 80s. but um, So I, I could come. Was it in color? No, it that. was definitely not. It was okay. Not. Oh, okay. 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 That helps. I didn't think about black and white. Yep. The star who was going to quit wanted to focus on his high school studies. How did do he? Dobie Gillis? Mm -mm. Leave it to Beaver. That's it a... Leave it to Beaver. Oh, that was Jim. Yep, it was Jim. With me. Oh, that's me. Jerry yeah. Matters wanted to quit. Jerry Matters oh. wanted to quit. Yeah, pretty funny. How are hurricane names retired? Boy, don't think too hard because we got Danielle coming up to the coast this weekend. Yep. Well, it's just alphabetical, right? Yeah, so no, no, so but you retire can... them when they're so bad, you don't ever want to use the name again. Exactly. Oh, so oh. Death, a certain category four or life. higher? Yes. Okay. That when there's a certain uh, destructive or loss of life theme, oh. those names would never be used. So, so yeah, when you're looking... There'll never be another Hazel. So it's or, not based on category level necessarily. Right, right. Not necessarily. So a Sharknado then would be. Mm -hmm. It should be retired. Uh, period for no reason other than to retire. So, so, so I've Hurricane, seen those movies actually. So, I've, so I've watched them too. They're hilarious. I, I I find them hilarious. So Hurricane Prasad still has a chance then, huh? Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's always possible. <laughs> always possible. Reused and reused and reused. <laughs> that Rehashed. one would take about two months to get up the East Coast, I think. <laughs> it was really want to miss anything. There was, an, there was an errand, and I only made it to tropical storm status. And oh, we'll be back. We'll be back. You you have yeah. a chance to come back. So perfectly yeah. respectable to be a tropical storm. Yeah, I think. I don't think there's been a Hurricane James yet. Oh, give, give it time. Give it time. Give it some. Time. I'm waiting. Maybe yeah. they avoid gospel names, not to not to upset yeah. people. <laughs> Could oh be. Has there, been, has there ever been a Matt or a Luke or a John? Yeah, I think the one. The a hurricane. No apostles. <laughs> no apostles. I think we should have a hurricane Nebuchadnezzar. That sounds like <laughs> one that could really do some damage. Oh, wait, James wasn't a gospel. What am I thinking? If only so people would have to say it, right? And spell but, it. Yeah. And, oh, that's even more cruel <laughs> to make them spell it. Professors, uh, the Nishiyama Onsen Keunkin Hot Spring Resort in Japan holds a world's record. What is that hot spring resort's claim to fame? Jim Tub still owes a tab. Oh. <laughs> uh, no. The greatest number of people in the hot tub at one time. Oh. <laughs> is it the, oh. That, that's a really For good guess. sure. Yeah. I don't know what I have here, but I the love it. The in the that, middle was five feet high. Yeah. Yeah. Is it highest elevation or lowest elevation? No, it has nothing to do with geography. Hmm. What does it have, it have to, to do with, with animal capacity? Um, you you could say that the greatest number of people have stayed there, but that would be kind of ignoring the root of why that was possible. Because it's the biggest. It's got the biggest footprint. Not because it's the biggest, but the smallest. <laughs> it's the biggest geyser or something. I don't know. Uh, no, no, it's actually uh, been around. As far as any written history can say, oh, okay. 705 AD, and it's Ooh. been run by the same family for 52 generations. Wow, wow. that's incredible. incredible. How cool. That's yeah, but how cool. brutal for the family. <laughs> <laughs> you're like Cousin Wilbur. It's like you're going to go into the hotel business, right? No, where do they go on vacation? <laughs> no, it's like you're like Poe's dad saying, You have the noodle dream. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god yeah i mean but seriously think about that kind of you know i mean you know the, the responsibility i mean if you know oh, running a spa all the time or, or you know i I don't know if I ever told you folks, but I always thanked my dad that he never opened up a restaurant because, you know, then I'd be like, oh, well, Dave, I guess your art school degree doesn't mean anything because you're doing carry out this weekend. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. the responsibility is no, no, thanks. Professors, what is an obelus? O-B-E-L-U-S. Big, tall, pointy thing. Yeah, <laughs> that's an it's obelus. obelus. Oh, oh, OK. <laughs> I'm looking for an obelisk. I somebody, that somebody, too. Who, somebody who likes big, tall, pointy things like that. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, obelisk. Um, I'm kind of shocked that neither Jeff nor Dan jumped on this one. It, it's some kind it's, of it's it's some a mathematical shape. shape. It's, it's got to be a mathematical shape. It, 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 it's it is, not the Octothorpe right. thing, is it? It's not the it's, pound it's a, thing. It's a fairly well known symbol in mathematics, but which? Oh. Hold on. Oh, look at my keyboard. Oh. Put your it's phones not the down. infinity symbol, is it? Yeah, you're really, really close. It's the classic division symbol with the line with the dot above and below. Oh. Is an hey, Jeff. Hey, Jeff. Does the infinity symbol actually have a name? It does, doesn't it? Uh, hey. Well, it's uh, a lemniscate, possibly. Oh, mm. uh, well, that's oh, the, oh. the name. Yeah, from the graph from Calc. Uh, yeah, we get to it in Calc 2, I think. Two, polar Calc coordinates. Two. Can't we just yeah. call it the loop the loop and be done with? I mean, <laughs> I call it the infinity symbol. Yeah, it works. The only yeah. coordinates that matter are Cartesian. Come on here. There we go. There we go. Uh, professors, which U.S. president, think a little bit before you respond, was the first to have their inauguration live streamed on the internet? Uh, uh, Obama. Wasn't Obama. Like first George Bush. Forty-three. No. Bush, okay. Uh, well, the internet um, went public in ninety-four, but uh, Clinton. So Clinton. So Clinton. It was. It was Bill oh. Clinton. Yeah, Bill Clinton. Yeah, there must have oh. been five people watching back then. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're being generous, Jess. My, my AOL account was. And they were all hooked hooked up to the Defense Department computer system. <laughs> yeah. well, the same. Previous. The same number of people who attended Trump's inauguration, right? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Too soon? Nah. Burn. Hey, how many of the contiguous United States? So just ignore Alaska and Hawaii. Uh, freak, freak states. states. As we always do. Oh, yeah. As we always do. How many of the contiguous United States border an ocean or the Gulf of Mexico? Ooh. 23. Three, three on the West Coast. Gulf of Mexico okay. is going to be Texas, yeah. Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Alabama, Florida, obviously. And then there's the East Coast. So it's got Georgia, to be Georgia, like the Carolinas. Oh, I don't even think New England. So 15 Beth, or 20? Beth says Man. 20 and Dan said 23. Oh, I said 24. Oh, you said 24? Um, I'm going to go 28. We a little trick called the Kendra Evans trick, and we just put all the numbers in a hopper and divide. Uh, right. You get 21, which is the correct answer. So, oh, so. half the states um, actually border an ocean. It, or the Gulf. It's amazing. Kendra's not even here, and she gets another one, right? And she used an obelus. That's right. <laughs> yes, she did. That's what I never thought I would live in a state that didn't border an ocean, but oh, somehow man. I seem to have managed it. You got something much better. Yeah, the lakes are much better. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the lakes are right. I miss the mountains. What, Mount I Clemens know. isn't good enough for you anymore, Jim? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I miss Mount uh, Hood. How about, I miss how the about Oregon those garbage coast. mountains on 275 on the way to the airport? <laughs> I'm just waiting for one of them to blow its top. You Midwesterners and your idea of what a mountain is is just bizarre. It's like, an just, ice uh, nipple. It's an ice nipple. We have the uh, the chat of God telling us all here down at the bottom that Hurricane James was an Atlantic storm in the 2020 uh, fall oh, season. Oh, look at that. So Hurricane wow. James was out there. I missed it. Well, well, there was oh, that there. was during COVID. I wasn't oh, paying attention to hurricanes okay. during COVID. We're going to upgrade here. Aaron from tropical storm to hurricane here. Pretty yeah. Quick. Okay. I had suggested they wouldn't use James because it was a gospel name. And then I remembered, wait a minute. No, it isn't. So yeah. I, I still now wonder, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, have there ever been those hurricanes? 
we uh we got to get the uh, um i think there's been a matthew okay all right my theory is quashed okay <laughs> um professors on average how much water is used in one american home every year let's a lot by number of gallons <laughs> So Ooh, on a, a daily basis, let's say, let's say 10 gallons. So times 365. Not gallons. in my shower. It's, a, it's about a gallon every time you flush the toilet. There's all kinds of water yeah, happening. But, oh, yeah, that's right. About a gallon and a half every time you flush. Oh, so we should bump that up too. And, and, and then what about yeah, washer, dryer, twenty washer? It's got to be at least 100 or more gallons. Per day, average per day. So let's say 30. So this is average per year. Right, but start with day and multiply by 365. Okay. Well, That's you can do that. The rest of us will just five. guess. So 10,800. Wow. So 10,800 is quite low compared oh to what God. I would say I would say 180,000. I mean, and that's shooting a bit too high, but it's straight up 100,000 gallons per oh, household oh per God, year. That's a lot. It's a lot of, it's a lot that's of water. That's approximately 270 a day. Well, and in my house, I have a cat who really likes drinking from the sink. So <laughs> I, was, she... I thought you were going to say he likes long showers. Um, <laughs> whatever. No, uh, she loves us to turn on the faucet for her so she can... She can uh, drink at it. I think she likes to think of herself as some sort of lioness, right? She's at the watering hole before she has to go oh, get food. She's before ready to she kill has a to wildebeest. go. That's what well, it is. you know, the stupid boy lions cannot feed themselves. They have to be fed by the female lions. So she's gearing up before she has right. to go hunt. That's mm. right. That's what I think. Um, just a, another quick update. Apparently, there was a Hurricane Matthew sometime after 2007 big one. on the Atlantic seaboard. So uh, there you go. There were Category chemicals five. everywhere. It was really <laughs> horrible. The chemical water was present. Matthew, Matthew. Mm. Uh, professors, where would you find on, on your body your glabella? G-L-A-B-L-L-A. -L -L your glabella. Ooh. Isn't that this? The nose thingy? Uh, it's not, I mean, you're close, Beth, but it doesn't have to do with your nose. Oh, so that, that little flap on your ear, the little no, knob. no, or that tent thing that holds your tongue to the bottom. Oh, of your mouth, that oh, that thing. I think that's it, it feels like that's what it would be. It almost sounds it when you say all those L's, but that's not it. It, it is a part of your outer face that much. I can For give bellow, you like bellum, like the head, like the forehead, or the or the. Like cerebellum, you basically have uh, hit the nail on the head. What so my horns? Death. It is the space oh, the between out? your eyebrows. Space Nicely oh. done, Jeff. That was pretty impressive. Nice, yeah. <laughs> the forehead, forehead. Yeah. Inductive reasoning. Wow. Go figure. Yep. <laughs> I'm the only one who's not covering his up with glasses, but uh, you can't see me because I'm a ninja today. <laughs> I can't. You're go, always our math ninja. ninja. Can you name the two people who were engaged to Carrie Fisher at some point before she passed a few years ago? Paul Simon. Paul Simon, who she actually married, but yeah. only from 1983 to 1984. Okay, so who else, who else did she date? She made a movie with somebody who was so taken with her that he proposed they never actually um, pulled the trigger and got married. Not Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Yeah. Nope. Not that was Blues Brothers. That uh, it was uh, Blues Brothers. Well, one of the Belushi. No, it was actually Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd. Aykroyd. To her, yeah, isn't that wild? No, no kidding. Mm. And then he went on and married Donna. I can't remember her last. Right, right. Oh, Donna Dixon. That's it. Thank you. Yep. Was some buddies. Mm -hmm. The hot blonde. Yes. How do you guys keep up with all of these Hollywood romances? <laughs> it's perpetual subscription to people magazine that's all mm. i spent too much time in the in the in the, in the supermarket checkout line so uh which u.s president holy lord i've never heard this before and i can't wait to spring it on my american history uh historian wife which u.s president actually owned a faberge egg not 45 Hoover. No, 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 no. Oh, I mean, that, that would be the, too easy. This is a, a come from Eastern Europe. red, white, and blue president of the United States. This is going to blow Wilson? Your, 
Was it Wilson? Nope. nope. I would uh, say Hoover. Uh-uh. Reagan? Nope. That, that Probably not a good Republican. guess, though. Because they come from Russia. Harding. You know who it was? It was, uh, of all presidents, it was FDR. <laughs> That's oh, what it says here. That's not that surprising, why? actually. Was yeah, it I mean, a gift from Marjorie Merriweather Post? She oh, bought most of them. Maybe, maybe. I mean, the family had enough money, so, you know, it's not implausible, I suppose. Yep. Uh, this is another great one. Gosh, these questions, Amber, they're just, they're through the roof. They're awesome. Only one of Shakespeare's plays is actually set during the time when he would have been alive in the play, Ooh. which play is it? Aaron, Romeo please, and Juliet. Pl- please tell us you are you're you're a Shakespeare specialist. I am contemporary American literature, but I kid ah. you not, my computer right now is literally sitting on a full volume of Shakespeare. It's, a <laughs> oh. it's so, not Romeo uh, and Juliet, but how we've about got Macbeth, like, uh, Macbeth? as you like it. We've got three complete volumes of Shakespeare somewhere in our house. Well, so. well, that ends well. But that, that doesn't necessarily tell you which is set in his own lifetime. Right. Um, right. I mean, there are some that on the on the title plate, Jim, I'm thinking yeah. back to my high school days of reading those plays where it says, you know, Verona, 1522, you know, whatever. It like is it one of the Henrys? One of the Henrys? Nope. It says Fourth, here fifth? it was only the Merry Wives of Windsor took oh. place during Shakespeare's hey, regular life. I didn't read that one. Nope. Me neither. Um, uh, Aaron, uh, a, a little while ago, we had some wonderful set of questions that I really had way too much fun with, and this is another example of them. I am going to read a lyric from a very famous song with great dispassion, and you are going to say what song that is from. Here's the lyric. Love those. We take the pressure and we throw away. Conventionality belongs to yesterday. There's a chance we can make it so far we start believing now we can be who we are. Is it under pressure? Nope. Jim, just convert that to a Christmas lyric. I know you can ace it. <laughs> oh, I know this one. I know Good it, but I'll be there on the chance. I, I, I have to have you sing it, I think. But well, I can't yeah. do it justice the way Frankie Valley can. Uh-huh. Oh, oh, Greece oh, is the yeah. word. It's Greece. Greece is the word. Oh. Yes. Oh. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't he showing up here in Detroit soon? I think he's oh, playing I'm like sure Indiama or something like that, isn't he? I'm sure either him or his hologram will be on the stage. Yeah, the or, or he's playing over in Windsor, one of the two. Jersey the Boys is such a good movie. Yep, that is Greece. Well, Dan's Frank, seen yeah. Dan's actually seen the sh- the show. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I have Very two. Saw it on Broadway. Professors, you did a fantastic job, and Amber has actually supplied us with what we refer to as an Ask the Professor imponderable, where we ask an open-ended question, and the panel chimes in with whatever their personal preference is for that question. She refers to it as a silly bonus question, but we take everything very seriously on the show. And imponderable. celebrity would you like to swap 24 hours with, and why? Gwyneth Paltrow. (laughs) <laughs> that would be kind of fun she can act she can sing apparently she can cook so but you've, all, but you've only got 24 okay. hours though beth mm-hmm. that's okay i think it's a good answer you get to own a company named goop that's awesome. yeah that's kind of well yeah <laughs> but she's been critiqued actually for some of the stuff they sell and making yeah. sort of false claims about it or shady claims about it. I She's think. gotten in a little, little four bit hours, huh? Yeah. yeah. Who would you uh, Who would you like to swap uh, places with for twenty four hours? Or Barbara Streisand. <laughs> oh, okay. I How's about think, the Queen? Elizabeth? I think Elon Musk, and I would spend the whole twenty four hours giving away his money. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> I love go. it. I don't know what I was laughing harder at. That was a really good answer, Jim, but David just chimed in saying Queen Elizabeth. No, that was me. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Dan. <laughs> just so I could, you I might could not have... make it through a full 24 hours, though. It's <laughs> yes, true. But you could manage the little weird no, way. No, I just want to wander Buckingham Palace. Actually, oh, no, that would be fun. That would I'll be wait fun. till she's on... Uh, She's on vacation up at Belmaro, is it? She is. Mm-hmm. And right now, the, the palace is open for tours. I've done that. They only have it in August and September when she's in Balmoral. But oh my gosh. It's oh nice. Gosh. I, would, well, I would pick uh, Max Scherzer on a game day. Oh, uh, 
for only provided that uh, I get to have his skills for a day and I get his uh, pay rate for a game. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's when you just write yourself a nice, healthy check and run. That that's would all. be yeah. the best million dollars I ever made. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's hundreds of thousand dollars for one game. That's a good oh, show. A million. I didn't yeah. even think about sports figures. Hmm. Yeah, because I don't have a very good answer to this question. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I could go in lots of, of different directions. Like, part of me wants to say Mort Krim for Pete's sake. Like, I just <laughs> want to know Krim. what's going on in that guy's head, you know? Hmm. I don't know. Okay, what, what about this? If When he was alive, what about Anthony Bourdain for 24 hours? Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, yeah that would have been good. Time. Drink binge and eat like a fiend in fact i just ordered as i told dan i just ordered a cook for your die t-shirt that has the mm. little chef's head with the the chef's knife in its hand in its oh, that's teeth cool. yeah i miss him terribly yeah. such a great writer and come on Aaron. what was yours I'm going to go off the wall a little bit and go with a hometown hero myself. Uh, I'm going to go with Jack White, uh, not only because I think it'd be awesome to uh, play that guitar, but also because he's got some pretty sweet reupholstering skills that I would love to just like bust out with some of my vintage furniture here. So cool. that'd be pretty cool. Oh, you're a vintage furniture person. We need to talk. So yes, I love all that, but uh, he's, he's, he seems to leave a pretty charmed life. So I'd, I'd go that's, for the rocker. Quite true. Quite true. Anything Man, else? So you, so did you, are you? Are we gonna stick you with more, March Crim? I mean, come on. I, Dan, I know, who I, did you pick? Did, who did you pick? Was it QE two? For me, that yeah. was Dan. Queen, Queen Elizabeth. Yeah. Who do you want to be, Jim? Oh, I picked Elon Musk. Oh, that's right. That's right. Money, money, money around. Around. So, yeah. Now you understand I why I can't learn students' names, right? <laughs> like it was 10 <laughs> seconds ago that you said that, or 15, and yeah. I'm going to leave uh, um, the rest of the, uh, um, you know, the panel and the listenership guessing, and I'll just say, I'm 45 years old. I don't know. I'm tired. <laughs> I got a lot going on. <laughs> and frankly, that was the moment that I found out that Tom Brady is younger than I am. And never have I felt older in my entire life. <laughs> you know, you got to start saying to your students, I'm as old as dirt, which is <laughs> what I say routinely. You just tell everyone you got fire for your graduation present. That's all. I should send to all of you, and I'm afraid this is uh, what our uh, wrap-up button is going to be for today. It's a beautiful little video so, um, all over the internet this week is sounds you haven't heard in a while. And it's a rotary phone. It's the opening of a VHS clamshell. It's a whole bunch of like old school things from the 80s that uh, you've got you mail. Haven't oh. heard. Yeah. Someone putting a pencil in a cassette tape and re-reeling it from one side to the other. Like I, I remember doing that. In a long time. ASMR for old people. Yeah, exactly. There we go. There we go. So I'm sorry, folks. The time has come to say goodbye, Jim. Goodbye. Beth. Goodbye. Dave. See ya. Aaron. Bye-bye. Dan. Goodbye. And Jeff. Bye, uh, Conqueso, y'all. <laughs> and now these words from University of Detroit Mercy. As the professor is transcribed in, you know, all of our homes, but usually it's in the Briggs Building in the Department of Communication Studies in the College of Liberal Arts and Education at University of Detroit Mercy's McNichols campus. As the professor is produced and technically directed by Michael Jason and Brian Masonville, and our executive producer is Professor Jason Roach. Until next week, I'm your host, Matt Mayo. <laughs>